programming made possible by Louisville Water. Quality water, quality of life. Louisville Water has over 150 years of experience in the science of water. Learn the history behind every glass at the Waterworks Museum, located inside Louisville Water's 1860 original pumping station. Gotta get a drink in this place. I mean, seriously. Well, unfortunately, Kyle, it's 1921. It's prohibition, so normally I'd tell you you're out of luck. But we happen to be in our Spirits of the Bluegrass Prohibition in Kentucky exhibit, and we've got a speakeasy. So, how about a straight Kentucky bourbon? Ooh, well, you know, nothing wrong with that. Although we may be arrested. <laughs> no, no, no. Wait, wait. We can drink it. They just can't make it, right? Uh, that's actually right. And, and how you got it? None of my business, exactly. but it's no not idea. illegal during Prohibition to actually consume it. Tell me a little about what's going on here with this fantastic exhibit and uh, how that plays a role in our Kentucky heritage. Yeah, well this is this is here at the Fraser History Museum. We like to consider ourselves where the world meets Kentucky. You can't meet the state of Kentucky without meeting the story of Kentucky bourbon. You know, a, a big history here, and a lot of it was coming from Kentucky before Prohibition, and then that happened. What in the world did folks do when they said, mm, sorry, you can't make any more of this stuff. There's a reason for it. Consumption was, you know, off the charts. You think we drink a lot now? Like in 1870, Americans were consuming four times what they consume right now. So that led to the advent of the temperance movement. Uh, and the temperance movement started going to work. People were basically over consuming. They were drunk all day. So it but wasn't, um, what was it, Carrie A. Nation that was all Carrie Nation, you yeah, got a picture of her, she's right think, over uh, there. Right behind she's us over there. Kind of a scary looking lady, but. Frightening. The, uh, <laughs> the story, she would go into different saloons and she would say, good morning, sirs, destroyers of men's soul. And she would start bashing the place with a hatchet or an ax. She did it like 30 different times. She got arrested every time. They, That's a buzzkill. Yeah, they, they, she, gonna and, say. And she was born here in Kentucky. She did most of her damage in Kansas, but she was born here in Kentucky. And so they would arrest her. They'd say, don't do it again. And she'd say, okay, I'm sorry. And then she'd go back out and go to the next. A lot of people don't understand that at the end of Prohibition, even the temperance movement was lobbying the government to get it repealed, to get it right. turned over because it, it didn't work. There were so many unintended consequences. But organized crime as we know it uh, is because of prohibition and, and Al Capone uh, is featured in here. He used to spend some time here in Louisville uh, in the Rascaller, the, the Seobach right. Hotel and, and uh, played poker in that room. Salute. So what's the deal? I mean, why were people pouring their bourbon and their stuff out in the streets? I mean, couldn't we have done something with it during Prohibition? It sure would have been nice, but they had to pay taxes on it if it was still in the warehouse when Prohibition went into effect. So that whiskey, which couldn't have been shipped overseas, was often poured into the sewers. Correct. All right, we've got this Prohibition thing going on, and then not far on the heels of Prohibition was the Great Depression. Absolutely. So you're saying maybe there may have been a little connection between Well, them. no question about uh, the economies in America and the stock market. Think about grain futures, think about soy futures, think about all the different industries that are connected with farming in the United States at that time in the 1920s. Right. So all of this is connected, and, and of course it led to a lot of poverty. So we came back out, people are getting back, but we still have some, even today, right? Some things, so, some, some memories. Certainly the lingering effects, yes. You can look in Kentucky at the ratio of counties. There's dry counties, there's wet counties, and then what we call moist counties, which have a local option about whether or not to allow alcohol sales in their county. You know, in, in some counties like Jefferson County, even on Sundays, there are certain aspects of buying alcohol only after 1 p.m. And then there are some counties like Franklin where you can't buy package sales even on Sunday. So these are some of the lingering effects of prohibition. 
One of the things that Cary Nation would be really proud about is the responsible consumption in the alcohol right. industry today. Everything is labeled and, and everyone is pushed to practice moderation and, and safe practices. The bourbon industry is a thriving, incredible economic stimulator for our state today. But there were more than 300 distillers before prohibition. And remember, there were only six that had a license to sell medicinal whiskey during Prohibition. So a lot of those distillers did not go back into business after the Depression. So we're really fortunate uh, here that we can look at the history, but also mine that for what's relevant today. What are those lingering effects of Prohibition? So come back and, and learn some more about well, Kentucky's history. We loved it. And I'm going to figure out how to get this <laughs> more liquefied. of the show. It's been fun and <laughs> We'll see you next time. Downstream. Programming made possible by Louisville Water. Quality water, quality of life. Louisville Water has over 150 years of experience in the science of water. Learn the history behind every glass at the Waterworks Museum, located inside Louisville Water's 1860 original pumping station.